The holidays are officially upon us and it's time to start celebrating, like actually celebrating. It's your holiday too, so you should be able to relax and do what you love. If that means watching every single seasonally themed rom-com, so be it. Do your thing and holiday your way with Me Undies. It's the most wonderful time of the year to try Me Undies because they're currently offering a very merry deal. Get 20% off your first purchase with free standard shipping and free returns when you go to MeUndies.com slash bald. These underpants are so comfortable. I'm wearing them right now. They are silky, smooth, and soft and make my nether regions feel supported and uh, very well taken care of. Just the other day, I was in the airport. And as I was going through security and they were patting me down, I remembered that I was wearing me undies and I smiled. This made the security guard frown, but again, who cares? I was having a great time because me undies make me feel so good. If you get your holiday shopping finished early, you can start making time for yourself with the new me undies holiday collection. Their underwear, loungewear, and sleepwear are made out of the softest, most supple fabric you will ever feel in your life and they're guaranteed to bring comfort and joy to you and all of your loved ones. You can shop their classic plaid prints for a traditional picture-perfect style, or you can get festive with their adventurous limited edition sweater prints. These are all available in a wide range of sizes from XS through 4XL. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com bald. That's meundies.com bald. Hello, love. Um, hello, Governor. We're in London. I almost yeah. said we're from London. That's not true. No, certainly you know not. I'm going to do something that people love on podcasts, which is to show people. Oh, be careful. Oh, yeah, riv- riveting. Absolutely gorgeous, Spipes. Well, we're here. Here I am in London for the fucking 12th time this year. Oh, no. Oh, uh, did I, did I, uh, did I, uh, Detect an ungrateful tone in that voice, Miss Lady. <laughs> I'm grateful. Listen, I'm happy to be here. It's just, um, you know what, though, for the air conditioning sake, I'm happy I'm here in the winter because you can't count on the UK to provide you with the air con, babe. Certainly not. However, you can also count on the UK to shut the doors tight and have the warmest kiki indoors um when uh, thousands of bodies get into some old rickety ass old maiden type of building thousands of bodies half of them have the blue haircuts say, and uh, the other half have a suspicious odor emanating from every single motherfucking pore of their bodies wash yourself per- and and yeah uh, wash yourself uh and, and and maybe a front tooth that looks like it holds the future the teeth is a the least of my problems <laughs> i love a ca- character teeth are fabulous they're like character shoes um but like they don't smell ba- oh actually they, usually, they do they, smell. They, they do smell That's bad. the yeah. kicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you tell me about Labada? Okay. Okay. So I was able to achieve um, something that I never thought that I was able to achieve. I went to... So I, I go on Instagram a while ago to for my favorite um, Ukrainian singer, Svetlana Labada. So her name is Loboda. That's how you say it. L-O-B-O-D-A. But you say it Labada. And it's just so weird. Svetlana Labada. Svetlana Labada. She's Ukrainian. She sings in Russian. I've been listening to her for the past, I don't know, five years or something. This was a big moment for you. Huge moment. But here's the kicker. She announced an American tour. Miami, New York, L.A., San Francisco. Where do you think she, we are when she's in L.A.? Poland. <laughs> we, I couldn't go <laughs> to New York. Which is ironically much closer to where she's from. I know, I know, I know. I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to any of the other dates because we're on tour. This was the only date, Miami, that I could go to. So I got, when we were in D.C., I got... A VIP table. Um, and then I was like, I'm not going to go alone. I would have gone alone. But since it was so close to the tour, I was like, okay, Eden and I will go. And then we, we needed four uh, people for the VIP table. Well, can I ask, do you know a single person besides you who likes this person? Like, did you have anybody where like, oh, here's my friend who likes this artist? No. However, <laughs> Andrew and Eden are both ruthlessly and mercilessly subjected to hearing her music in the studio every day. So they're, they know, they actually were singing along, but they were like, <laughs> they're learning. Like Andrew knew the words, just not Ukrainian what they, people speak Russian. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So she sings all of her, most of her songs in Russian. Okay. Um, she has a few, uh, recently she has a few Ukrainian hits. She was actually the Ukrainian entry for Eurovision in 2008, I think. 
in an English language song, which was, you know. I think we're doing our venue in Warsaw. By the way, you can come see us in Poland. Yeah. Our venue in Warsaw, I believe we switched venues because it's because currently the Ukrainian being used. refugees. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, it, the, it was a, it was, we got the tickets. It was for a, in a casino in Hollandale Beach, Florida. Just where north, the fuck is that? North of Miami, um, Miami Beach. So it, it's it was like thirty minutes from South Beach, mm -hmm. and um, ooh, girl, girl, it was. <laughs> I mean, first of all, we went to the beach. It was me, Ethan, Andrew, um, and Eden. So I, I saw that salt water douching right up your pussy. Mama, <laughs> sand in the dick hole, honey. Like I forgot going to the beach. When you really get all good and juicy down on the beach like that, it gets everywhere. It, like the it's sand it gets everywhere. The salt in the eyes, salt in the, the face, in the mouth. Snow on the beach, salt in the dick hole, um, uh, exfoliating your 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 what's gone sour. It was so intense, but it was so fun. Warm water, warm water. Well, well can we be honest? Like when we no. when, when the whole world shit talks Florida, no, Miami, Miami is the the nicer part. It's got culture. Right? It's got architecture. It's got Cubans. It's got people. Huge Russian diaspora. Apparently, great outdoor mall. Lovely. Well, so the the Sport of Kings Theater at the Gulfstream Casino was lit. They had one of those Christmas trees that lit up all different colors and synchronized mm -hmm. music. I almost cried. And, uh, <laughs> it was What's so the game fierce. are there? Is it score? Twist. Twist. Oh, no, that's in South Beach. Twist was fierce. I worked at score once, and that's where I met Rubber and, and uh, Lisa. Now, where's that? Lisa Limbaugh Rubber. Is um, in, I think it was in Miami, probably. Miami, okay. Yeah, so there's Fort Lauderdale. Lovely gay, 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 gay. That's where my uncle's former um, boyfriend tried to show me his penis. Thank you very much. I probably shouldn't have said that. I went to Fort Lauderdale um, because I won a trip on Drag Race. Oh, yeah. And I went there once did you for love three it? days. How did you love it? Yeah, I mean. Did you go to the um, the nudie resort? I just would never choose to go to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> like, not for vacation, not for anything. Because it's just, it's LA, but humid. Like we already have good very, weather. I don't need to go there for the good weather. 80, 82 at night and 90% humidity. It's Eden crazy. was like, with her hair, she was like, I'm in hell. I don't know how the drag queens. Well, you know, Florida, I feel like I think of a lot of the naked girls. It's not fashion. Necessity. It's survival. Yeah, it's survival. It's by necessity. Even the girls without perhaps the most showable Stunning body. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the girls who don't quite serve the body are like, yeah. well, gal, I'm yeah. going to put on the necklace. Yeah. I'm going to whip my cock out. Yeah. And I'm going to take my <laughs> shoes off. And get my $40. Florida yeah. is where I have seen drag queens with no clothes or no shoes on. Naked. Well, it's a it's a, it's a a different set of policies down there. Brandon and I were at a certain bar once where the bartender re leaned over and gave us money to go give the girl because she, she was completely naked with no shoes on and there was no tipping going on. And I Are was you like, sure she was in the lineup? Or I was she, asked, I said, she. It, this feels like, like an unhealthy. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. We could intervene and they, it was a right. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, you know, during a drag show, you do want the audience to feel secure yeah. that it's a show. And not sex trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a farm to table sex trafficking, <laughs> you know, scheme. But we went down to uh, South Beach and I went, the night we got there. Went to Twist. Twist was fierce. Twist the gay bar. Uh huh. No I've cover. Never been. No cover. Tuesday night we went in there. Um, Did you dance? Uh, oh, we danced. We danced. And then, um, do you like to dance? I do in the certain uh, in the certain set of circumstances. If like it's you know. Well, if it's like music I like, which is never played at any bar. The older I get, the more now when I'm at a gay bar, I'm actually like, why are we dancing? Let's go dance. Yeah. Let's I don't have know. Fun. I mean, I, in my 20s, I never felt that loose. way. And now post COVID, I'm like, yeah. well, I'm already uncomfortable. I may as well go enjoy you might myself. As well look uncomfortable too. Yeah. 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 But they had all these different rooms and most importantly, smoking areas all throughout. Oh, because it's like half indoor, half out. Yes. Like four different rooms. I'll say this about Florida. Because it's hot and putrid, the, the air, air conditioning is fierce, lie. Diva. They don't play around because it's like it, Texas. Yes, because it is like it's like oh, um, uh, they if the desert has water pumped in mm -hmm. because they need water to survive. Yeah. It's that vibe. Uh -huh. It's not like these fucking these um you know other these variable climates where it's like oh you know eh, no 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 when the heat wave comes they know what time it is. Absolutely. Yeah, they know I, what time I mean it is. Dallas shit like that. You walk in and they have. Long, thin aircon things above the door. So when you open the door, you're blasted Blast. with freezer air and you're like, I'm never going home. Also, a lot of the restaurants and malls, strip malls have those misties, those cold misties. Which Devils and P.S. I almost have to like stop from jerking off because it's so so fierce. Yeah. Devils and what? They have those in Palm Springs. Yes. Yeah. In Absolutely the motel, we lovely. have central air in addition to in-room units. 
so you will never be left hot at the Trixie Motel. By the way, teasing ahead, we have a at the motel episode we're going to do. Oh, yes, we do. There's going to yes, be guests there while we're there. That's fine. And we're going to be probably by the poolside. Like, can you guys quiet down? Yeah, shut up. Well, they'll be like, um, we should, you should charge extra that day. Maybe. I think Surcharge, we should. Surcharge, yeah. We could ask while they're there. Yeah. Do you have $5? Can't handle. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I have more questions about Labadon. Okay, wait, wait. So, wait, be, before that. So, we went to Twist, and then um, this gorgeous um, uh, drag queen walks by, um, tall, black, braids was down to her ankles. Oh. <laughs> braids down her ankles, and I was like... Huh, I was like, that looks like Ebony XL that I know from Boston circa 2010. And sure enough, it was. She was doing a show there at one o'clock. I went over and introduced myself. And um, I had known her from way before Drag Race. Ebony XL. Ebony XL. Great name. Yeah, it, super, super talented, crazy dancer. She looks like, um, she looks like a, a kind of like Grace Jones's daughter. Super glamorous. It hasn't aged in 20 years. I don't know how, but she... Uh, didn't recognize me at first, but then she's um, she's like, oh my God, Katya, Katya. And then she goes to the bartender. This is Katya from Drag Race. The bartender was like, who cares? Literally. He was the, like Elaine from 30 Rock. Who cares? And it was so, it was so great. You know who's the ultimate culprit of not knowing who we are, which is totally fine? Security at gay bars. But Security the, is they, the number one mama. employee who's like, who? They, like, I don't believe you. What, what, yeah, Julia Roberts or George Clooney. They're the only two people I know. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so Labada. We go to the Sport of Kings Casino. Um, <laughs> at it, How many seats is it? Um, well, it was like a it was like a nightclub. It was kind of like Royale in Boston, it's a little bit smaller. Oh, okay, okay, but tons of tables, tons oh. of VIP tables. Okay, racket a small um, kind of pit area, and Mama, the real show was going on off stage. Well, first of all, we were early at peak. Yeah, who was in the audience for that? Besides you, well. Me, my party of four were the only non-Russian speaking people. Absolutely. Oh, besides Jonathan Chibin, who's this food god. I've never heard of him, but do you know, I don't know him. Um, but Andrew and Ethan and Eden seem to know who he was. Anyways, go in there. Well, first of all, I see her, I see her rehearsing at seven o'clock, shows at eight. So I, I, from outside, I see her rehearsing with canes, with dancers. I was like, oh my God, this is, I was so excited. You're like, this is going to be turned. I was like, because I was expecting the bottom of the barrel. You never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel. She could either give you like Cirque du Soleil or just like, you know, mud people. Two step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but so that was promising. We get in there. Show is one hour late. We buy have to buy a $200 bottle of champagne, which was the cheapest thing on the menu. How about a $800 bottle of Dom Perignon? I mean, listen, I know from, there was a time where I was getting offered a certain DJ gig at a certain, uh, hotel in a certain Las Vegas <laughs> and the base pay for things in those environments yeah. is very low. Yeah. But if you're somebody who sells a lot of bottles and tables, the, the paycheck for the artist compounds like, like to the power of like okay. 10 tables is this much, 15 tables is this much, 20 tables is this it's much. Like logarithmic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking on your credit score? Didn't think so. Tee First thing I do is brush my teeth, my baby teeth, because I'm a little girl. A chime. That's exactly what they do. For the secure chime credit builder visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. Their members see an increase of 30 points on average. I'm trying to get a better credit score so I can buy a house, not just a dollhouse, tee All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash bald. That's Chime.com slash bald. Okay, I gotta go back to school. Bye. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank, NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or at any all-point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Unfortunately... Life doesn't come with the user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. 
Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. It's Dr. Phil, by the way. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere. 100% online. I know personally when I talk to my wife, it keeps our relationship stronger because I get to work out my own problems with my very own Dr. Phil. Teehee. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed embedded therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. You know, not everybody has a therapist with his own TV show, am I right, Oprah? No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash bald. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel, and I want to tell you today's episode is brought to us by our friends at Established Titles. Now, I love receiving gifts, but I am not the most gifted gift giver. I'm not the most imaginative. I really always want to do something special and one of a kind, and I'm always on the lookout for something like that. And Established Titles is the perfect thing. Let me tell you about it. It's a fun way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland and support global reforestation efforts. But basically... The more fun part of it is you purchase a souvenir plot of land in Scotland and based on the historic Scottish customs, it allows you to call yourself a lord or lady. So you buy this like piece of land that officially makes whoever like name it's in is officially a lord or a lady. It's pretty cool. It's a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords or ladies in English. So you get a one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Oh my gosh, I know so many Scottish people, who have, well, Americans who are of Scottish descent. Like I'm thinking like Morgan McMichaels, who's like, like 100% Scottish, somebody like her, that is like a fierce gift. They plant one tree with every order and work with global charities, one tree planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. You could officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card or your plane tickets or your dating profiles. And it's a great like last minute gift, but also it's a fierce thing. Imagine you're tender. Hi, I'm Lady uh, Stephanie McGee. I don't know. I don't know your name, but put in your own name. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using our link will effectively be next to my plot with a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our little bald and beautiful kingdom in scenic Scotland. If you're doing some last minute holiday shopping, this is a perfect gift. I have a lot of friends where honestly, they I don't know what to get them and this is perfect. You can order a digital certificate and print it out all within five minutes. Established Titles is running a massive holiday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code BALD, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash BALD and get your gifts now to help support the podcast. I mean, it was like people were just wandering in at their leisure. But were they all like you where they were like, I can't believe I'm going to get to see her? Absolutely probably- not. No. No. They were, they were, <laughs> it was, everybody was surge. Sur- I mean, every single person had a nose job. Every single person had like, it was like the ratio of men to women, the women to men was at least 12 to one. Russian people? All Russian speaking people. You, okay. There are various, you know, Ukrainian, whatever, um, as former Soviet republics. Um, it was so probably like, Im- like immigration or first, like, yeah, they're all living the huge uh, population, Miami, huge population everywhere, really okay. New York, LA, uh, you know, Santa Monica and Fairfax is like little Russia in LA. And now I don't want to generalize, but was it giving like a lot of makeup designer label clothing? Honey, you can generalize yeah. <laughs> because it was like, cause the Russian gals who used to shop at the makeup counters, they would come in. Sweet done. Tea. You know I wish I, mean? I could show you this woman, <laughs> this in various levels of, of, of like of sophistication to just like 
Hi, yay, yay, yay. This one girl had, bull, I mean, she looked like me if I had to get ready, like um, if I had three hours to get ready just to do my eyes. Oh, so it's not always good. No, no, no. This girl had, she gave Trisha Paytas as a drag makeover. She had crunchy um, bleach blonde hair, a loaf, and then uh, pin straight extensions that went down to the waist. Alaska. Yeah, yes. It was, I was like, because I was just finished telling the, the, the my party, I was like, I should not, have, I'm so glad I didn't come in drag because I would have been ogled and, and ridiculed. But then I saw her and I was like, well, maybe not. Because um, she was giving very like um, third time in drag, but she was a woman. Anyways, so many tall girls, skin tea, E-D boots, like I like eating disorder boots. Oh, you know, like, dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like girls with the erectile Well, dysfunction. the boys, the guys. Was like, it old men and hot young bitches? Mo- yes. Because I'm imagining yes. that it's like um, bottle service girls. Yes. And like mafia people. Well, the, they weren't They weren't dressed up. They were very, it was like mafia cats, like biz cash mafia guys. Just like <gasps> oh, derpy, is it like, derpy. Is it like the the Russian hooker dresses in LA? Yeah. I mean, one girl, this like, there was a lot of tall girls, a lot mm-hmm. of tall girls like plucked from, you know, there was a, one girl was in a hot pink ostrich feather uh, suit with pants, like ostrich feathers poking out. It looked disgusting. Um, <laughs> but and, she probably thought it was rich. Oh, she thought it was fierce. And then another girl was in like a, um, a head to toe Chanel. So gorgeous. Another girl was in this fucking. So they're really giving colors and levels. They're giving levels and uh, grad- gradients of all the so fashion some people spectrum. Actually looked good. Oh, no, no. Some people looked spectacular. And then we get to the main event. <laughs> now it was called, it was built as a charity concert. Um, and uh, if I understood every word she said, I mean, she basically read Moby Dick throughout the night. She said so much, there was oh, so she, much patter between was numbers. Was it interesting to hear her talk? What she, was she funny? Um, well, I could not understand about 80% of what oh, she's saying it, was because it, it was all in Russian. Oh, wow. The only thing she said um, that day was on her Instagram. Hello, USA. I'm so excited to be here. That was it. Everything else was in Russian, but it was a lot, a lot of monologues about Ukraine, a lot of monologues about women, um, about um, certain things. Like I could get pieces and pieces, but. Was not- your table depending on you? And you're like, I learned my Russian from her songs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. until she starts singing, I, know, I don't know what I she's know. saying. I mean, I was, I was screaming all the lyrics and stuff. I, I sat down for one song cause I didn't like it, but um, it was, uh, it was interesting. This fucking yellow suit, bitch. This yellow fucking suit. Now I you took footage. If you're watching the pod, we can show it on YouTube. Let's show yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, we'll show it. Here, take a look. Um, she wore this. So she has long blonde hair. She wore this wig that I would wear. It it really looked like a wig. It, it was a wig. A it unit. was it was a center part, dark rooted, um, kind of like a wavy shoulder length, full haired wig. And I was like, Mary, what are you doing? It was just very biz cash. Yeah, it was. Very, she's forty. She just turned forty. Um, but like in her previous concerts and in performances, she plays stadiums in, in some of these, you really? know, Russian, Russian puppies. She's you know. really famous. Well, she's got 7 million, uh, Instagram followers. She's got, um, I don't know what her record sales are. I have no idea, but she's very famous, not with young folks, more with millennials and older generations, but, um. Well, it's like Indian celebrities, for example. Mm-hmm. India is such a big country. Yeah. You can have so many yeah. followers right. and then be famous, not a lot of other places. But that's the truth about any other international act. And they, it, to break into the American or the English speaking markets is impossible, you know? Um, but R- Russia, I mean, former but, Soviet, Russian speaking countries are many and numerous. You yeah. Know? Um, including but, the Russians in America. Including what? Like Russian speakers in America. Yeah, like you said, tons they exist. Of them. Tons of them. So much so that many artists can enjoy like a pretty extensive tour of the United States. I went to one in Boston, This the most famous singer, packed the the, pl- the place we were at. Most of the Russian people I've met are in the service industry. Like when I worked in P-Town, they would also be there in the summer doing a summer yeah. of like serving. And there are like a lot of Bulgarians too. And like, Bulgarians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... I mean, it's stereotypical, but drivers like you and I were in a car once and you were doing your Duolingo and that driver was helping you with your Russian. I love a Russian driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, I forget what phrases you were saying. And he kept looking in the mirror at you. And then eventually he started correcting your pronunciation. He was like, why are you learning Russian? You were just like for fun. Well, that's, that's always the thing was like, um, as I'm learning Russian, they're like, why? It's either, (laughs) they're like, either you have a girlfriend or you're going there. For like for work, those are the only two reasons. I watch a lot of those Russian. YouTube videos. This is so clickbaity, but I'm so susceptible to anything like this. Okay, where it's like, um, guy who speaks per- white guy who speaks perfect Mandarin surprises the staff at a deli. Uh huh. 
and he'll go in and he'll order in Mandarin and their face is always like, yeah, they're like, why do you know this? And he's like, oh, I learned it with my girlfriend. And they're like, oh my God. And they're always in the videos, super appreciative. Yeah. They're like, thank you for learning this non-essential. Well, that's, well, that's funny. Cause I was, I did the same thing the other day. I went into, um, uh, my, uh, what was it? The, it must've been the Kung Fu store. And I said, did you really? No, I'm not a Kung Fu store, but, <laughs> but what's but, a Kung Fu store? I don't think there are there any, but, but that's, I speak a little Mandarin. That's great. Was that mean? I speak a little Mandarin. Oh, yeah. but then, and then they go, they oh. go, they go, she, she. No, I don't know. Not, I mean, it's, well, you know, I got the, you know, when I'm in Montreal, I try to get fierce and they go, oh, and like, nice, nice, French. <laughs> and nice French, honey. nice French, yeah, good effort. Now, what do you want? A baguette? <laughs> yeah. Babes? Wait, wait. So, okay, quick. So the, the, uh, 45 minutes of a fashion show uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm falling asleep because it's like, we were but at no the fashion beach all day. She, the dancers changed? Um, the dancers changed. They were in their work the world, uh, season one costumes 25 <laughs> times. <laughs> And actually, during like bodysuits and stuff, uh, bodysuits, um, uh, sheer coats that were removed, pony, geogun ponytails of uh-huh. the yaki variety. <laughs> and um, at one point during the end, um, there was a strap, the two straps on one of the dancers' costume broke, and we could see full nipples for five minutes. Good for her, though. You got to keep going. Oh, she, and she was a pro. You could tell, I could sort of sense that she knew and she was a little uncomfortable. The choreo did not say that. She was. She was fabulous. And to, funny enough, some of those dancers, there were four of them, were doing very different dances at certain points during the evening. It was <laughs> not, it was not the most meticulously choreo. She would have, she would have pages, <laughs> pages of notes. Yeah. But that fucking yellow suit, I understand the, the Ukrainian colors and her patriotism and her, and her, her hometown was fucking destroyed. You know, like she yeah. is, it's really tough for a Ukrainian artist who is, travels around Russia and has lived in Russia and she lives in Europe now, but to, to continue your career and, and she's very like involved and do pop and not be 18. Right, right, right. And she's hard for anyone. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. And she's like, um, but it was like Kylie Minogue. Imagine if Kylie, imagine if fucking Australia was like under a siege or something from Britain Mm -hmm. and Kylie Minogue can't just be like, you know, Two hearts beating together. You know, you yeah. got to kind of like. You know, I love Carly Minogue. I fucking do too. I, I fucking do too. It's just such a common conversation to have with Australian people when they're like, is Kylie big in America? And anybody with taste goes, not as big as she should be. <laughs> yeah. No, her, and it's a fucking crime. Yeah. Her songs are so timeless. And I she's so I'm such wonderful. a faggot for her music. I'm such that a faggot Eddie for concert, her. I cried. Girl, I it's cried. amazing. All the lovers? All the, the fountains? lovers. Yes. Oh. Uh, London, yes. I love you. Can't get you out of my head. I mean, up on the plate, classic. the boilerplate. Yeah. Um, I love that song. I'm the one. Yeah. Love me. It's just so fierce, so fabulous. So wait, wait, anyways, hold on. The, I'm not done with my trauma about the yellow suit. <laughs> so <laughs> PTSD, rage, and female yeah, trauma. trauma. So the, the band comes out so excited, hour late, whatever, no opener. But they start hour playing. Hour late? The show uh, starts an hour late? The, sh- the show is at eight. She co- um, the band comes out at nine. Mary, I've been there since seven. Clock is ticking. It's humid. And, um, you know. Uh, you would have left for anyone else by then. By the way. I should have known better. I, I, I don't go to enough concerts to know that time is, is, is the elusive. You know, the elusive chanteuse comes out in her own time. But it was eight to 11. So I figured, okay, probably nine to 11. Anyways, the band comes out. They start playing something. I'm like this is a little more rock vibe. And I was like, if there's a fucking opener, cause somebody was on a microphone. I was like, I am not going to sit through a male led a vocal led opener for 20 minutes. So then she comes out and I'm like, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that yellow? Suit? What you got there? Good. What you, what you got down there? Lady, what's, what's that suit all about? <laughs> and it was a suit of a fit that let's just say begged to be revealed. It into looked sub- like she, Zara, well, Zara, Zara, but she, H&M. she picked up a men's suit, a plus size men's suit, and then forego a, a fitting. Yeah, she had a very um, form fitting, what I'm assuming to be like a bodysuit, uh, blue bodysuit. Listen, yellow and blue, the Ukrainian colors. I get it, I get it, I get it. And I'm, but mama, we're, not dis- we're not talking about the colors. We're no, talking I'm, I'm talking the about the colors. Yellow is tough the- for a blonde. Yellow okay. is tough for a blonde. I know. I and love yellow. It works for me. You're different though because you do yellow sequin payettes with boas and shit. This was a, a this was fucking the mask. Jim Carrey <laughs> and the mask. It was Dick Jim Tracy Curry and the yeah, mask. Jim Curry and the mask. 
and there were times where she would do this thing, like take it off the shoulders, and we're like, okay, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, and then she put, it back, put it back on. Oh, what? Mary Dugan. It was maddening, but I knew every song except one, the first one. I don't know. I don't like it, but it was um, it was oh, the crowd. This fucking were they singing? Was, no, they were like a nightclub. It so was they were chaos. Her? Yes, they were ignoring her. Yes, there was one woman um, over on the the VIP table who had a three three year old child who was dancing. That was great. But everybody, all the guys, because it was like a twelve to one ratio, the guys that who were dragged there by their wives or girlfriends were could not care less, and they were just on their phones screaming. Everybody's having family reunions, drinking alcohol, having appetizers, meats, and stuff. It was what? chaos. But you know what though? Don't you think? Casino gigs in general are just a little left of, cent- left of yes, center yes. as far as the typical experience. Yes, but also um, uh, Marcella was telling me that foreign concerts are not like in America. They're wild. Oh, maybe the culture is more yeah. like a, a get-together. It's a get-together. And also, if you think about this, like it's a Russian community with outside of the country. Expat, you know, like People haven't seen each other for a while. Maybe they're coming from other maybe places. Maybe it's more like a drag show where it's like you can talk during it. I don't know. I Our drag shows are a little bit more... That's not an invitation to talk during our shit. No, but it, but it, I, I, it was just, it was chaos. And there was a bald guy right next to me and I was trying to get my jush, but I had a great time, but it was, um, she did one costume change and it just left a little bit to be desired. Cause it was another baggy fucking leather suit. And I was like, Mary, I've seen your other work. I've seen your <laughs> concerts. And wait, what did your table of non Labada fans think of it? Andrew lived. I think he cried at one point. Really? Yeah, because he was drunk, probably. And um, Eden, Eden and I were bonding I've seen over him like, cry. yeah, he's he yeah. cries he, at the drop of a hat. Yeah. yeah, Ethan likes music and he likes Lubbock actually. So it was a, um, he's a music publicist. So it's a, it, yeah. oh right. And um, Eden was very cons- very into the fact that like the dancers were out of sync. Um, you know, <laughs> what was she when was she singing versus not singing? Where was the track? How much of a track? And, but she played the drums. That's she, cool. Fiercely too. With that now that the suit made sense for that it was like a butch moment um but uh yeah it was uh she gets down but damn that does she have, does she have a big gay following i would imagine yeah gays and imagine. lesbians um yeah i would imagine i mean i'm not i really don't know actually not uh young folks more does millennials she clock any other gay guys there a three maybe really? wow. her, maybe her stylist there was her stylist that that food god guy and maybe like four other ones but they could have just been euro trash it's hard to say. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. There was one guy who was so like this bodybuilder guy who walked like this. And that was fun. Too bad she, you know, oh, it's a bummer. She could have come seen us. She could have come seen our show maybe. Do you think she, she knows who you are? Well, she reposted me on her Instagram, but I think just because I have a blue check mark, you know, and she was reposted a lot of other people and she's done that in the past. But Wait, what do you think about the blue check mark going to be? On for Twitter, sale. it's going to be purchasable. Flop Tina. I'm, we just got to get out of there. I, I honestly, I, think, I don't want to sound whatever. What? Whatever. It means something. Well, I get afraid. I get afraid of expressing myself because I feel like I get raked through the coals and I'm always For scared. What? Elon Musk is a fucking idiot. But I mean, I just feel, I feel that if you have a blue check, it's because you're a public figure, you're a public figure, or you have some sort of recognition because of your position of uh, your career yes. or your artistic prowess or like whatever you're famous and now lack of a we're word. making we're, we're saying that money can make your voice seem more important we're basically acknowledging that that's true and it's the worst thing about america to begin with is that money makes someone important yeah and so i, I think what money the, will buy a blue check well i think that they're trying to do the opposite they're trying to use a small amount of money to make profit so that everybody's equalized so does that mean that celebrities now will have to pay for the check or uh, can if, people buy a check both what is the point? Then that would exactly. I think he's trying to he's trying to generate revenue or something. Then again, um, I know people who are like journalists with dozens of followers who are verified. So like really, really it's not even about No, it's about authenticity. It's about authenticity. It's yeah. not about fame or no. richness. No, no, it's not about because I know many, um, many, many for some reason the porn community is always jilted because I know uh porn actors with hundreds of thousands of followers who don't have blue check marks. Interesting. Yeah. I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure exactly what the rubric is, but I think when the journal journalist case would probably be for, for, um, authenticity and, um, uh, clarity of like the source is, you know, I don't want Twitter to get mad at me because sometimes they do have to help me with problems, but 
I think Twitter is the worst place on the internet. And I think it's really fine if we all leave. Absolutely. I think it's really good. If my, I could pick yeah. one to go, that would be the one I would say. Let I know go. it's a bummer because my Instagram has not been working for the past few weeks. And so I've been spending all that extra time on Twitter, which is not doing anything greater for my like overall well-being. It is. Twitter is the worst place on the internet. and But you can curate the experience to your liking. No, but Twitter is a place meant for extreme reaction, extreme like snap judgment. Misinformation. Yes, it's yeah, the yeah. craziest Bullshit. place on the internet. It's the people who hate things the most are I'll on say Twitter. Facebook. It's probably worse. I don't even remember I mean, being on Facebook. I don't do that. Yeah, I haven't done that in years. So The only reason I still have it is because my Instagram's linked to it and posts to it. Yeah. And plus I know that I have like, like, oh my God, somebody, I ran into somebody in Milwaukee who was like, I friended you on Facebook. You didn't respond. Like, I said, where are you from? 2002? Do you know my login? Because I don't, bitch. <laughs> yeah. It took, it took me, when we had to do advertising on Facebook for the tour, it was a process of two years to get into there. I don't even. I could have run and folded a pyramid scheme in that time. I know. Successfully. It's crazy. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. Want a smoother contour and more youthful looking cheeks? Rediscover a younger looking you by adding volume to the cheeks with Juvederm Voluma XC, part of the number one selling collection of dermal fillers based on a January 2022 provider survey data. With help from Juvederm Voluma XC and a licensed specialist, you can achieve a more youthful cheek look completely customized for your goals. For important safety information and find a licensed specialist, visit Juvederm.com. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M.com. Not for people with severe allergic reactions, allergies to lidocaine, or the proteins used in Juvederm. Common side effects include injection site redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. There's a risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel, which can cause vision abnormalities, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. Talk to a licensed specialist to find out if it's right for you. Okay, so imagine getting everyone on your list the perfect gift while it's still November. Hello, I mean, that's how I shop. I literally have everyone's holiday presents wrapped in, a, in the closet by Thanksgiving. I don't mess around. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale right now and spread the joy of cozy. And Tommy John, you're that much more comfortable so you can do everything better. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale and give the gift of comfort to everyone on your list, including yourself, with new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. With over 18 million pairs sold, giving Tommy John has become a holiday tradition. 97% of women and men love getting a gift from Tommy John. That's why Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. I love wearing Tommy John because you guys, I mean, at the end of the day, when I'm corseted and tights and bra straps and things glued to my face, my eyes, my nails, my head, my body makeup, I, when I get out of drag, I need to experience the opposite of drag, which is extreme comfort. So I need Tommy John. Celebrate softness season with the gift of new Tommy John underwear, loungewear, and pajamas. I got to tell you guys, I love getting these type of gifts for Christmas and stuff because I'm not going to go buy myself lounge pants. It's just not like something I would do. But whenever I get it as a gift, oh my gosh, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Every gift's backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free guarantee. Shop Tommy John's Cyber Monday sale now. Get 33% off everything plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com bald. It's one of Tommy John's biggest sales of the year. 33% off everything plus free shipping at TommyJohn.com slash bald. See site for details. And we're back. And um, we're back. What so, do you got there? Uh, so I have this wonderful, fabulous new book that, so uh, a couple of weeks ago or something, uh, you were out of town. So mm -hmm. I um, wanted- She came to your house. She came to my house, which first of all, I was so nervous because my house is done. Walk in and be like, hi, poor. Well, n not that. Just like, hi, ugly. Because- Hi, ugly, poor. Her house is- I haven't been to it, but I've seen pictures. It's so beautiful. She has incredible taste. Taste that I love. And um, and she's it talks about in the book that which I had not read because they wouldn't send it to me in advance. So that was always fun, fun to do an interview about a book that you haven't read. Um, but she uh I did a ton of I know who she is, Natasha Leggero. And um, but before the interview, I um did a ton of research, watched all the roasts and uh, I, I watched a whole season of Another Period, which by the way, so funny. So funny. It's um there's three seasons, I think. It's a um a, a comedy show. It, it's like a turn of the century um drama or comedy that's in the style of a reality show. So it's like Downton Abbey as a reality show. Fucking 
I mean, I don't like comedy shows, to be honest. I think I would love that. It sounds like it's, Reno 911. Yeah, and there's all the people. Michael Ian <gasps> Black, Thomas what? Lennon, all those what? people. It's so funny. I gotta so, watch this. You would love it. It's it is so funny. I was having sex with my um my my man friend on the couch, and my focus was being pulled more and more towards the TV. It was real. Not, that's not a dig on him. He's very well. Well, it's hard with sex because you don't want it silent in the room, but you don't want something that's going to pull focus. Yeah, this was pulling all the focus as I was trying to pull his. You know what? Pull his focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so. It's so funny. So 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 funny. Christina Hendricks is in it. Um, they got a lot of great guest stars. But anyway, so um, she came over and I was so nervous. Um because my house was not in a state of whatever. She was so nice. She was arrived right on time, a little bit little early, to be honest. And then um, we had a great chat for an hour. And um, yeah, I've been reading the book and it's very funny. She had a child when she was 42, froze her eggs and stuff. Yeah, she's 48 right really? now. Looks so beautiful. Good for her. Yeah, she's, well, she's really awesome. You and I had our book come out. Yes, yes. We bonded over that. She Guess what she said? She When she got the book... She was like, I couldn't believe how thin it was. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. I was yeah. like, I, I I, thought I wrote the Cheesecake Factory menu. <laughs> yeah. I wrote the Skinny Licious menu. Yeah, yeah. And you that's thought, unfortunate. Yeah, Moby Dick was just a, it turned out to be a pamphlet. And we yeah. didn't get New York Times bestseller. We did not. We surely did not. I wonder if she I don't want to sound ungrateful or, or whatever. I wonder if she will. This comes out November 15th. I wonder if she will. I, I, I don't want to sound ungrateful or whatever, but we already did it once. And I, I didn't, I don't super care if we get it twice. No, because guess what? It's like. But they I say mean, Gram Grammy Award winning artist, New York Times bestselling author. It's just you make it once and it's there forever. It's fine, you know. And we're not in danger of writing a book ever again. There's certainly no um. Yeah, there's I, I don't. No, no way. There is a. There's no say, way. When, no. When I have to when I have to sign paperwork, I'm mad. When I have to do a docu sign, I'm mad. Yeah, like I said, I have unlearned. Um, I've just been looking at the pictures, and there aren't any, so I got through this real quick. I just become illiterate. You can be drawn your own. Yeah. Fuck. She well, had, oh, wait, 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 wait. One more thing. What is it? We're about to, we're, by the way, we also just, we're in London. We just got here this morning mm -hmm. and we start the show tomorrow at Wembley Arena. Wembley Arena. You know, um, this, we're continuing the trend of having a hiatus and then coming right back to one of the most important shows of our lives with no preparation. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Why are they doing that to us? Well, why are we doing that? The last leg, like, we started with Radio City, which was psychotic. Psychotic. And this leg, like, we're starting with Wembley. Yeah. Do you know what the other problem with that is? What? It makes you have this endorphin and like rush at the top. And then you go down to Hull. Yeah, then we're going to Blackpool or Leeds I'm or going like, down to Kitchener. Yeah, like, well, West Virginia to the to the five and dime parking lot. Yeah. No, th my my thing is that is this is I'm a little worried because adapting the, a show, a theatrical show to a, a venue of this size is going to be a little challenging. And I don't know if we have enough time to do it, but I guess we'll find out. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You know why? Why? We have the funniest drag show on tour. We do. And we, we have the best fans ever. We do. And we have the best dancers and yeah. the best fans. Yeah. And it's great. I yeah. don't I don't get nervous at all. This is the first stage thing I've done where I don't never even crosses my mind to get nervous. Yeah. Well, it never crosses my mind that they won't like us. Right. I do get a little nervous. Um, but uh I get a little, I get like um I get the the pre-show jitters or whatever. Diarrhea. Yeah, diarrhea. Yeah. Do you say gonorrhea or diarrhea? Both. Bofa. Yeah, I both. shoot gonorrhea out of my ass. <laughs> um, I um just re I, last Monday I had a college gig in Col Columbus, Ohio, uh -huh. and I haven't done a full hour fifteen of stand up By since pre pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was shitting bricks. Yeah. All day. I was like, oh god, do I even remember how to do this? I was like looking at my material and like looking at what songs I was gonna do. And when I'm by myself without my band too, I play by myself. So then I have to figure out what songs am I gonna play by myself. And how am I, and I'm using my loop pedal. I don't know if you ever see me use yes, my loop yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looping That's with my pedal. That's a lot to think about. And I have buttons that add harmony, buttons that loop, and I have to get the you know the loops right or they don't work. And um, I have to tell you, I had a fucking blast. Was it a triumph? I thought honestly it was going to be like here's me trying to resurrect this stand up thing that I used to do before COVID. And I got up there, and I was like, not only did I used to love this. I was really good, good at it. <laughs> yeah, I had a yeah. great time. I cracked my own shit up for hours. Oh, wonderful. For hours. How long was the show? 
I went for probably like an hour 20. Oh, that's fabulous. But, you know, at the, no, to be honest, it was an hour 15. It was an hour 15. Even better. But, you know, I, I was like, oh, I hope I have enough to fill it. And then by the time I started to think that, I was getting the 10 minutes off stage. And I was oh, like, I guess. Oh. Love that. And, you know, if it's if the show is flying, it means it's going well. Absolutely. When it's. Mama, when you're like, are we almost halfway done? And it's been five to six minutes. You're honey. Like, yeah, there were some yeah. summers and there was some times in P-Town where I had maybe 15 people in the audience. And I'm like, well, we're here for 50 more minutes. I would just do a, a, a circle of sharing at that point. Let's share. Uh, laugh yoga. Like, yeah, yeah. Bring people yeah. on stage. <laughs> talk about yeah, their trauma. Absolutely. Wait, where were you for Halloween? Um, I did something very unprecedented, which is wear a black dress and a dark lip. Yes. Did anybody recognize you? Well, I went to Milwaukee <laughs> and I did my Halloween gig there. And I wore like this pink Bride of Frankenstein troll doll thing. We did that yes. thing together. And that was fine and lovely and gorgeous. And then I went to LA because I had to do the Boulay Brothers Halloween. Mm. And I put on truly a black dress from ASOS, mm. a black shoe, sheer Cat black ears. tights. Cat ears? Not even. Not and even. a dark purple lip. Whoa, did anybody recognize you? <laughs> no one. And yeah. I was actually a little bit scared for that because that was probably my biggest DJ gig to date. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the most people, but the most like... This is LA yeah. on Halloween yeah. and the boules are here yeah. and it's, I can't it's mess up. Yeah, and I'll good. let you know that I ate. You I ate. picked the right songs. You I slammed in the right amount of like Halloween sound effects where I wasn't playing like spooky, scary skeletons, but I was playing like vibey, haunty shit uh -huh. without playing like Monster Mash. Like Deborah Cox. There's yeah. a stranger in my house. That's, I did. Well, when I got to Boston, because that was a seven and a nine gig, then I could pull out some of the corny. Corny so then calls. I played like somebody's watching me. Oh, okay. thriller. Okay. Shit like that. I'm sorry. You know, rimming kids aside, um, that thriller song is a BOP. Well, it is. It really is. Yeah. But you know, not everybody thinks that he did it. And I think that's why people still play his music. I was at Twist and I was just like, they were had the thriller and they had it on. Um, they had the Jennifer Garner movie on. What are they, it appeared in some Jennifer Garner movie with Mark Ruffalo. It's a, oh, 13 going on 30. Exactly. And I thought, wow, this is just charming. It's an amazing song. Yeah. Now, if he was a Try Guy, he would have been killed already. And should have been. And should have yeah, been. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I wonder, I, I think that guy's, um, the adulterer, the Try Guy adulterer's body, his charred remains are still on view in the public square of Columbus, <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> that is totally what's happening. Yeah. I got to show you a picture from this gig. Okay. Or I got to show you a picture of something too. This is me in Boston getting my zhuzh at the Royale. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, Look how at me exciting. Myself. Oh, you are a slut. Look, oh, that's oh, also me. Oh, I love that. Let me show you this. This is me up Well, that outfit you wore to the signing was really, I, I was, it was you like a tramp and I loved Slutty. it. Slutty. Slutisha. Hold on. I'm gonna find it. There's a really good video of me thrashing on the fucking floor. Look at me on this table. On the table. Oh I my got, God, you table. got turned crunk and lit. It's to Thriller, I think too, actually. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's great. Can I show you something? I love to DJ. I love to tour. You love to tour. <laughs> it's like a reverse orgasm. You dudged. Yeah. That, that's, dudged. that's what it feels like. You know what that's what it feels like? What? That's what my tushy feels like. Because I don't know how to turn down the water pressure. Oh, right. Yeah. I have to go. And even then, pressure washed, asshole, skin yeah. on the floor, yeah. blood in the toilet. I think I'm going to have to dilate this tour. Because I'm telling you, I have a... You're dilating too? I'm going to have to. Because listen, David and I have been apart so much. I've been having so little anal sex. It closes When we want to have sex, I'm like, yeah. if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And you have to get the, the knitting needle to poke the skin that's had the layer over the hole. My, and I used to be able to do it. Now, my, I, I, unless your dick is a pesto cava toppy. Like, pesto cava toppy. Uh, pesto cava top me. Like, and, and now it's like, you know, let's say that David and I have a very healthy sex life yeah. but because we have been seeing each other yeah. when we are going to have sex. I'm like, ah, oh, I used to be able to just snap right into this. And now I'm like, oh, bottoming is hard. I'm like, I'm so I've got the preparation thing down pretty much. Like I, you know, I just do the rectum. I don't want to get gross. But like, like I'm not doing that colonic irrigation that all my friends are into because they're all like on display at the Met while they're having sex. Like, but the... But it's, so there's never a problem with cleanliness. It's just that God damn it, so damn it's, it's too darn tight. Am I gonna have to become one of those people? Darn tight. <laughs> Am I gonna have to become one of those people who wears like a butt plug for an hour before yes. the sex or during bed in bedtime? Oh, yeah. oh, before sex. Or, I've done that. I pre-gamed, and that's it, what I mean. Am I gonna have to pre-game? Yeah, and then, but still, I have a. Let me ask you this, because also the, the, a certain amount of pain doesn't turn me on. It takes me out of it. Thank you. I'm but not one does, of those gays with this, the pain. Right, 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 right. Does this 
whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. Does that does that feel good to you? Not pain, no. No, no, I'm talking about whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. What does that mean? The dick going in and pound the, the drill. Yeah. It feels good. When it's working, yeah. What's, what, what, what is working? Like when it's relaxed, when you've used the right amount of lube, when okay. you're taking your time, it all works. Okay. But like I said, when I was like, when I'm having sex all the time, it's easier to get into it. Right. But when you're not having sex all the time, it's harder to get I gotta, into it. I'm going to take that water ball and stick it on my pussy when you leave here. I guess. Maybe porn has given me unrealistic expectations too because when I see the bottoms in porn, I'm like, am I supposed to be able to do that? I saw a video on Twitter the other day where the guy had four hands in him. Four hands. Four hands. It looked like that meme of the people like holding hands in a circle. Like, Trust There were four hands in him. Trust fist? Yes. That's like a comp- that's like a weird team building How exercise gone wrong. I don't know. But I saw um I saw now this is a very this is not very large, but this is the size of the penis that I had um that I had um, you know, whatever, uh on a previous leg of this tour, and this went up my butt with the most it took a while. It took a Four long to while. It took it I mean, it took a long while and then got it all the way in. That was his, that was it. If he was like, you want to take it in and out now, get go to the library, get out of here. This is not going to work. I couldn't even imagine that. And these guys are taking, they're getting oil drilled. They're yeah. getting Texas they, tea. But they are yeah. for hours. hours. I know. And they're like, am I gay? I know. I like, I, like Jasmine Masters, girl, I'm not that gay. I don't know. I, and I, I'm just curious. Like, I know it's performative. It's porn. Do they, but what is the pleasure element of it? I'm, I'm curious. Am I going to have to get an, am I gonna have to get an anal surgery? Anal paralytic, or an, an uh, gauge my hole. That's what. It, yes, I think we have to gauge our holes. Gauge our holes. Yeah. Well, if you see us on this tour walking funny, just know that it's because we have yeah. two pipe bombs yeah. shoved up our ass. It's because my I have a bum hip and also a can of coke shoved up my ass. <laughs> you know, it's been feeling great for me. What the back? Yeah. Good. The pain is gone. Good. I went to a chiropractor. Yeah. Twelve minutes later. Yeah. Pain bam, permanently bam, bam, gone. Bam. Yeah. Gotta love it. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. My skin put, looks okay. I put on a lot of self tanner, and this is the manifest. Look, I look tanner than you. Yeah, jeez. Oh. Oh,